What on a Thursday and a big Thursday it is. Happy New Year to all of NFL fans everywhere. And a big day yesterday to start the league's new year on Wednesday afternoon with the Titans making a bunch of moves, a flurry of moves after being quiet, being a snake in the grass for about 30 hours after a big Monday. Quiet, quiet, boom. A lot of news hitting at once as Mason Rudolph signed to be the backup quarterback. You have Nick Folt coming in to be back as the kicker. And then Calvin Ridley signed to a big contract for the Titans. Four years, $92 million. And the Titans are signaling what's to come in the new era of Tennessee football under Rand Carthon and Brian Callahan as the head coach. And we've got a memo to apparently uh, Mike Conley in the chat and also uh, national NFL media for people that are not understanding what's going on with the Tennessee Titans. But man, this is going to be a massive show and a great sign for the Titans as the off season has just turned up a notch with number zero coming from Jacksonville to Tennessee and the Titans playing the snake in the grass. Rain is cooking. How much cooking does he have left to do in the kitchen as this free agency is really just getting going. Uh, but we're going to have a great show here today. We'll talk more about Calvin Ridley, the overpay, or is it just right? As Calvin Ridley said about his contract, one word to see how you guys feel about this and your reaction when the news hit yesterday. And it is a Thursday, which means we had the magic bucket. Now, Sam, I forgot to get the magic bucket out of my office closet across the way, so I'm going to have to do some, some type of gymnastics to get over there uh, mid-show to grab the bucket. Well, we'll see what happens there. But Sam, welcome in. Uh, going to have a big show this morning. Let's get this thing rocking. Yeah, huge show this morning. Uh, we had a huge day yesterday. Rand Carthon had no chill uh, and no real uh, regard for those of us in the media world who are trying to cover signing after signing after signing. No break in the news, Austin. And I just want to put this PSA out there, by the way. Uh, Rand Carthon did not realize that my White Sox were also trading away uh, their ace, Dylan Cease, in the midst of all this. So while I'm in the oh, yeah. middle of being like, Oh, the Titans are busy. Now all of a sudden I got baseball stuff in the back of my mind. I'm like, great. Now I can't look at what 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 my favorite baseball team did for three hours because Rand's trying to cook a little bit too much. But it's going to be a good show because of it and a very exciting week of Titans content because of it. So go ahead and like the show and share the show before we get jumping here. If you're watching on Facebook, hit the share button in the bottom right corner. If you're watching on YouTube, take that YouTube link Send it to somebody, text it to a group chat, a Titans fan in your life, a Jags fan in your life. Maybe you want to rub it in a little bit. Maybe a Texans fan in your life and you want to say, hey, hey, newsflash, buddy, Titans are coming. Titans are cooking and they're coming a little bit. Put the pressure on. Just share the show. Get more people involved. That's the best way to support A to Z sports here b before we kick things off on a Thursday morning and I try and... uh Battle of cough, I guess, this morning. There you bit. go. All right, let's do, let's do it officially. Welcome to A to Z Sports, powered as always by the BetMGM app. I'm Austin Stanley. He's Sam Phelan, our Titans reporter for A to Z Sports.com. And we are Nashville's on demand sports talk network going live weekday mornings at 8 central time on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Link to the show segment by segment on our Twitter X timeline. Also hit us up on Instagram, TikTok, and threads for more great Titans content. We got to thank our sponsors because they make it happen for us and they help out all of you. Uh, like Wilson County Hyundai, make them a part of your new car buying process. See them in Lebanon or online, wilsoncountyhyundai.com. The Bone and Joint Institute, boneandjointtn.org, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care. Farm your health plans, get better with your health coverage at fbhp.com slash ATOZ. And Krebs Kubota, an elite Kubota dealer, with three great locations across the mid-state, Columbia, Franklin, and in Murfreesboro. They are online at KrebsKubota.com. So there's so much to get to. The Titans signing Calvin Ridley with a bag, signaling what's to come in a new era of Titans football. We'll get to all of that here in a second. Some housekeeping notes. Uh, the Titans are bringing back Nick Westbrook-Akine, uh, the undrafted wide receiver, now coming back for his fifth season with the Tennessee Titans organization. Some news that got absolutely buried yesterday because of the Calvin Ridley signing was Mason Rudolph as the Titans' new backup quarterback to go along with Will Levis. I'm sure, Sam, you will get to publish the article you were working on uh, yesterday. Uh, they got interrupted by Calvin Ridley. 
but uh, I just saw this Calvin uh, Mason Rudolph's contract from Aaron Wilson one year up to three point six million dollars. Uh, not much guaranteed. A signing bonus of one th- uh, three five. So uh, you know, not much there for Mason Rudolph. And then Nick Folk was brought back uh, as the kicker for the Tennessee Titans. And so a lot of news there. As I mentioned in the cold open, the Titans had a big Monday, right? They agreed to terms with th- with four players on Monday. Lloyd Cushenberry, Jadobia Wuzie, Tony Pollard, running back for the Cowboys, Kenneth Murray Jr., uh, outside li- or inside linebacker from the Chargers, then very quiet over Tuesday. You hear some buzz around some defensive players that have yet to be signed elsewhere, luxurious need trade conversations. And then all of a sudden, the news damn breaks. And Calvin Ridley, uh, after the news of Mason Rudolph comes out, Calvin Ridley, Ian Rappaport goes three red alert emojis. Sources, the Titans are signing Jaguar star wide receiver Calvin Ridley completing their free agency with a splash, a stunner. The 29-year-old Ridley gets a four-year, $92 million deal with $50 million fully guaranteed on a contract negotiated by David Mulgetta and Riza Hazam of Athletes First. Uh, there you go. We know where Ian Rappaport got his information from. Uh, that would be the agents of Athletes First. But Sam, I'll toss it over to you. Uh, I know you were mid-Mason Rudolph article when this happened, but what was your emotions? What was your reaction when you saw the news of Calvin Ridley to the Titans coming true? Uh, I mean, surprise initially. Like, I I think Rappaport was dead on when he said it was a stunner. I'm not sure the Titans, while it makes sense for Calvin Ridley to be a target for them, uh, while I think this signing makes a ton of sense in the context of where the Titans are as a team, uh, I'm not sure anybody really had them on the radar for signing the top free agent wide receiver in this class. Uh, And so for them to take a big swing like this, uh, I think it says a lot, as we'll get into here, about Rand Carthon, about Brian Callahan, about the new era of Titans football. Uh, And I found it funny as well, because just moments later, after the Nick Folk signing, I think there was another tweet from me and Rappaport saying, all Titans, all the time. Uh, And that's sort of what it has felt like here over the last 24 hours, because you've got Diana Rossini coming in and tweeting earlier this morning that there's interest uh, from Marcus May and uh, like another safety that is potentially on their radar. Mm -hmm. It just seems like the Titans are active. They're one of the top teams around the league as far as being active and being aggressive is concerned. So I, I was very surprised to see that they converted on this deal and a lot of pleasant surprise because uh, I I think this is a huge testament to this front office, but I also think just a, a big win for where things are headed for the Titans. I think it makes their job a lot easier over the rest of this off season heading into the draft. You can start to see an offense and a roster shape up a little bit. Like I've, I've made a graphic last night that just had, Will Levis, DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley, Tajay Spears, Tony Pollard, all on it. And that's not including anybody they could take in the 2024 NFL draft. Mm -hmm. That leaves Traylon Burks off the graphic. That leaves Chigakonko off the graphic, who are probably just complimentary pieces at this point. But I was like, wow, I'm getting excited to watch an offense like that looks like this. And who would have thought that this is where we would be in 2024, a year ago today, where the Titans have... Will Levis, Tony Pollard, Tajay Spears, DeAndre Hopkins, and Calvin Ridley. That kind of comes out of left field. Yeah, and so I think there's a couple memos that I want to go over here. And Jay brings this up. He says, unsure why they add a 29-year-old wide receiver as if they are in win-it-all-now mode. So, yes, Calvin Ridley is 29 years old. He actually will turn 30 years old in December during the 2024 season. So before he finishes his first year under his new Titans contract, he will be 30 years old. Now that is interesting, right? That sounds old. He's not that much younger than DeAndre Hopkins, but DeAndre Hopkins has been around this league for a decade. Calvin Ridley has not. Calvin Ridley has only played in 66 games uh, as an NFL player. And it's not because of injury. He was suspended the one year for the gambling suspension. He did step away from football during the season before that, 2021, with some type of personal issue, which led to him gambling on his phone on Falcons games. But why is Calvin Ridley 29 years old? So, Sam, if you remember a couple weeks ago, I think it was you and I that were talking about how is Calvin Ridley this old? Like, what happened? 
what happened in the Ridley's youth that allowed him to get to this way. Calvin Ridley actually, uh, there's, it, and I found this this morning uh, on the internet doing some research. Calvin Ridley spent time in foster care as a child and was held back in school because of the foster care time spent. Then when he was a senior in high school, he only played in three football games because he hit a mark where in the rules of where he was playing, if you were 19 years old and nine months, you were ineligible, ineligible to play high school sports in where he was at. So after three games his senior year, he hit that 19 years and nine month mark, making him ineligible moving forward. When he got to Alabama, he was 20 years old for the majority of his freshman year, but ended his freshman year as a 21-year-old freshman and then left Alabama after three seasons, went to the NFL draft. That is how Calvin Ridley is 29 turning 30, but has only played a few seasons like this, where Amari Cooper and Calvin Ridley are the same age. They never spent time at Alabama together. Amari Cooper's been in the league for so long, yet here's Calvin Ridley. So I think that's an interesting thing that I had to figure out of, you know, why was Calvin Ridley a 21-year-old uh, freshman at Bama, and that's why he's getting his second contract in the NFL at 29. Sure. So I think a couple things to this. Number one is that, like, wide receivers, uh, you can be very good post-30. Like, we see this happen all the time where uh, guys can still have extended careers that are incredibly productive after the age of 30. But number two, I, I believe there is age in football, and then there is football age. And Calvin Ridley is a guy whose football age is a lot younger than his age in football. Yes, he is 29 years old. His body is maybe 26. Like it, when you break down what you just said, Austin, he's played 66 career games. That's less than four full seasons of football in the NFL, just in terms of games played, not even a full four seasons of football, not even a rookie contract for most people. Uh, so the, Calvin Ridley, the, the amount of football that he has played, the wear and tear that that would take on his body, he is not at the same level of an Amari Cooper or approaching the same level as a DeAndre Hopkins. I think he still has a lot more in the tank for a 29-year-old uh, than would initially meet the eye. And so uh, I can feel okay about his age. And, and this is another reason we're going to get into this a little bit later. But for Titans fans out there, you can look back at Calvin Ridley's 2020 season where he was awesome, almost had 1,400 receiving yards, was number three among all NFL wide receivers in yards per game. And you can think, well, that was 2020. It's 2024. It hasn't been that long for Calvin Ridley, who played a iota of a season, like just the beginning of a season in 2021, stepped away, missed all of 2022 for his suspension, and then bounced back to a thousand yard form in 2023. Right. Uh, it, it, there's a lot of reason to believe that this guy can still be that wide receiver and that he still has a lot more of high quality football of that nature in the tank. Yeah, and uh, Bill says he has more tread left than other thirty-year-old wide receivers. Absolutely, Absolutely. it's it's uh, the mileage that's available uh, rather than the age. It's exactly what people are saying there. So, all right, so that's one memo that I wanted to get out of the way. I wanted to get that memo of the age because I found that I, I wanted to follow up on the conversation a couple of weeks ago about why is he so old? What happened in his youth that created this foster care? Makes a lot of sense. And Sam, I think it's going to be really interesting to learn more about that. How did that? shape Calvin Ridley to be what he is now and what his experience was uh, through that uh, youth foster care experience. So, all right, the next memo, this is a very important one. And I'm going to call out Mike from the YouTube chat earlier that really teased me up for this. So another memo uh, to national NFL media about the Tennessee Titans. But first, Sam, you know what time of year it is. It's I'm March, up. baby, which means we've got college hoops and we have – our bracket challenge is back. Last year, we had over 420 people play in our bracket challenge. We're running it back again, and this time it's presented by Prince's Hot Chicken at the Nashville Tanger Outlets. Prince's Hot Chicken, Nashville's original hot chicken. And so you can go watch all the tournament games. 
but you can also sign up with our bracket challenge. I'm pasting the link in the chat right now. It's through run your pool. If you played last year, then you can play again this year. I'll send an email out to everybody that played last year. Lucas says he got second place last year. So you guys can do that, but Hey, you go watch the game at Prince's. Not only do they have the original Nashville hot chicken at this Prince's location, but this Prince's location at Tanger Outlets, Nashville, got TVs on TVs on TVs. You're there for the hot chicken. You're there for the original recipe, but you're also there for all the college basketball. The SEC tournament really gets heated up today, just like that hot chicken, uh, but the tournament starts next week in our bracket challenge uh, right there on Run Your Pool. I pasted the link right there. So Prince's Hot Chicken, shout out to them at Tanger Outlets in Nashville. Go check them out for all of your uh, college hoops needs. I see Darius saying A to Z and Prince's is the collab I didn't know I needed. The OG Nashville hot chicken. So we're very excited about that. Hey, and local winners will get gift cards to Prince's. If you win our bracket, you get a free TV. But if you're That's a local nice. winner, then you get free Prince's. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm talking about right there. All right. So Sam, the other memo that I think we have to send out to Nashville or to national NFL media is what Mike brought up. Mike said this in the YouTube chat early, but they won't pay AJ Brown. And that is the memo that is very important because it's very obvious to see if you've paid attention to it, that the Titans signed Calvin really to $92 million with 50 million guaranteed. And immediately you see all of these bozos who know nothing about the Tennessee Titans on uh, national media are talking about A.J. Brown this, A.J. Brown that. So the memo that goes out, the Titans have fired the general manager and head coach who were involved in trading A.J. Brown two years ago. A new GM and head coach are the ones who paid Calvin Ridley the $92 million and are also changing the offense to advance beyond the 1990s. And so I will take that a step further. Yes. Mike Vrabel did not want A.J. Brown to get traded. But Mike Vrabel's 1990s offensive philosophy devalued the wide receiver position that the Tennessee Titans had. And so the reason why A.J. Brown was lowballed by John Robinson is because under Mike Vrabel's watch, A.J. Brown was not going to get the target share that was going to make paying him $25 plus million million dollars a year worth it in the mind of John Robinson. It was all a mistake. We know that it's easy to see that, but that doesn't mean the Titans should make the same mistake and not pay somebody else moving forward. Especially when you're paying Calvin Ridley less two years later with inflation in the NFL and Calvin Ridley's a less of player than AJ Brown. So that that's my version of the memo. Sam, I'll let you take yours. Well, I think the inflation is also something that like needs to be talked about here. As yeah. Jesse pointed out in the chat, the cap has gone up over $30 million since that moment when A.J. Brown was traded. So contract values are going to go up as well. A.J. Brown getting $25 million a year, even just two years ago, would probably look a little bit like 28 a year in today's market value. So uh, th that is a step up from what the Titans gave Calvin Ridley. Not only is it a different player and a different regime and a different GM in a different offense, but it's a different market and a different league structure as a whole. So uh, yeah, the situations are not comparable by any means. Um, right, I, I, I just did some math. I just did some math. AJ Brown got an average of $25 million a year in 2022 from the Eagles. Calvin Ridley just got an average of $23 million a year from uh, the Titans. $25 million a year for the NFL salary cap in 2022 was 12% of the salary cap. $23 million, which is what Ridley just got, and that's not going to be his cap hit, but $23 million a year on this salary cap is 9%. So there, that's a what, three. What, yeah, what's the salary cap right now? 255. It was 208 well, that, so, in 2022. Yeah, so a the even percentage of salary cap in today's market would have been paying A.J. Brown $30.6 million per year. <laughs> yeah. 
that, that, that was my the, next that, equation. Yeah, I mean that that's the ratio that you're talking about here. So, like, salary cap does matter when you're talking about uh, like what how much money teams have to spend usually influences how much they actually spend. Uh, if you were giving Calvin Ridley thirty point six million dollars per year, maybe we can talk about it. But you're not, and so it, it's not a contract that's on that level. And it's not a contract that's done by the same coaches and, and GM. Yeah. And uh, Danny says, uh, no math on air guys. Well, I mean, we just did it. I think we just did, did it, it well. Like We did it's math well there. on air. Yes. So Calvin Ridley's contract at 23 per year average is only 9% of this year's salary cap. Guess what? He's not going to have a $23 million cap hit this year. It's probably going to be like 14 or 15 million at most which is going to be even less than 9%. And guess what? Again, the salary cap is going to continue to go up, which means that his percentage of cap is going to go down. So I think it's a, we'll get more into that later on, but, uh, but I did want to address the memo that we needed to go out there. Different people, different philosophy. The good thing is the Tennessee Titans under Rand Carthon and Brian Callahan are modern. They are not, Mike Vrabel's offense. They are trying to go spend. You got DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley on this roster, and they not they might not be done adding recept, receiving options uh, as weapons throughout this offseason. They bring back NWI as a fifth receiving option. Perfect uh, right there. You have Tony hey, Pollard let's... and Tajay Spears who combined for over 100 receptions last year. There's a lot of dynamic uh, pieces in this offense already. Yeah, and let's go ahead and get this out of the way. I know the natural line to draw, right, is, okay, you've got Calvin Ridley. That takes you out of the running to take a wide receiver at, at seven. That takes you out of the running to take uh, a weapon at seven. You're now probably looking at an offensive tackle, and you could potentially trade down for somebody that wants to come up for a quarterback or a wide receiver at seven. All of that kind of true, absolutely a possibility. I would still – be surprised zero if the Titans stuck and picked a, uh, you know, a Roma Dunze at seven overall. And then we're like, all right, well, now we're just going to have three really talented wide receivers because Austin, as we know, DeAndre Hopkins has one year left on his deal. Perhaps the Titans are trying to get ahead while they're in the position right now to draft another stud wide receiver to set themselves up where even if D-Hop leaves next offseason, you can still have Calvin Ridley and another good wideout for Will Levis. So I don't think it, this rules anything out for what the Titans could potentially do throughout the rest of the offseason. I don't expect them to be done finding offensive weapons, and whether that's Brock Bowers or a rookie wide receiver, I still think possibilities are endless, uh, which means this offense is only going to get better. Yeah, no doubt. All right, so let's get the chat more involved today. I, I know we have Super Chats. We'll get to some Super Chats uh, here uh, in our next segment after we ask you guys this question. But the question is simple. We want to see where you guys take it. What's one word to describe the Titans signing free agent wide receiver Calvin Ridley? What is one word to describe the Titans signing free agent wide receiver Calvin Ridley? Uh, but first, Krebs Kubota is where you should turn for all of your equipment needs. It's like 80 degrees outside today in Nashville, which means get outside, get some of that stuff done. If you've got projects around the house, it's getting probably pretty close for you to cut the lawn for the first time uh, this spring. So Krebs Kubota can help you out with that. They are an elite Kubota dealer. Elite Kubota dealer means they have the best equipment in the industry, but they also have the best warranties in the industry as well, because it's important to have a great warranty with your equipment because you never know what happens. Things break because you're using a lot of force power into the earth. Uh, with your equipment and these projects outside. So maybe it's just a mower or a trimmer for your yard, your situation, or maybe you need more. You need that power unit to take your projects to the next level around your property, whether it's residential or commercial. Krebs Kubota has got you covered. Over 18 years, this uh, family-owned and operated company has been running. They've grown from Columbia to adding Franklin and Murfreesboro. So check them out online at KrebsKubota.com. Today's show is powered by BetMGM. BetMGM is the king of sports books. We mentioned that it's tournament season, right? We're here in March. Uh, and so whether it's the SEC tournament, the Big Ten tournament, whatever conference it is, or if you're waiting for the big dance next week, make sure you are placing your bets on BetMGM, the king of sports books. 
Use the bonus code ATOZ Sports and get up to $1,500 in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. It's the best way to do sports betting when you get a second chance to win big and the risk is limited because of it. So ATOZ Sports, that's the bonus code on the king of sports books, betmgm.com. All right, so Sam, we're asking what's one word to describe the Titans signing free agent wide receiver Calvin Ridley. Uh, they give him a $92 million contract over four years. 50 of that is fully guaranteed. We still don't know quite yet. The signing bonus, the contract details, the first year cap hit, all of that, but $92 million over four years for Calvin Ridley coming off his second 1,000-yard season. So one word to describe uh, the Titans signing Calvin Ridley. We also need more likes on the show, but Sam, to the chat you go on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch uh, there on the answers. One word to describe the Titans getting Ridley. Big Ten Jeff says overpaid off the bat. He's overpaid. We've got cool. We've got great, epic, shocked, needed. We've got boom, uh, big time, masterful, excitement, money, poached. Ooh, I like that one from Sky Hicks. Poached, poached. is good. I like uh, poached. Let's see. We got hope, great, epic, freedom, headache, offense, modern, splash, alt, uh, encouraging. We've got, uh, let's see what else we sensational. We've got cooking. We've got exciting aggression. Phenomenal gamble says Brandon weapons says Eric, uh, stupidity. Lou man, not happy with the Calvin Ridley. Lou man's been having a weird week. I know Sam, right. you haven't been live here since Monday, but, uh, Lou man's having a weird week. Okay. Well, hope, hopefully everything gets Worked out, Lou, man. Hopefully you have a better week. Uh, checkmate. Uh, we needed evolution. Modernize. Necessary. Uh, we got usually some very positive things here with a couple of very negative words like overpaid and, uh, you know, whatever. But Austin, is there one word that jumps out to you? What is one word to describe this signing? I mean... <laughs> I kind of want to use a hyphen. That's, but that, that's one word. It's one word. Okay. Well, as I'm long not as using it's a real it. hyphen, unless you're cheating and doing two words and then being like, oh, they're hyphenated. No, it's, a, it's, like a, it's like a hyphenated phrase. And, I, and, and Skip Bayless used this um, previously in the week, but I'm not going to add what Skip added at the end. But all in. This is an <laughs> all in move for Will Levis. This is, you know, this is what the Titans are doing. And Buck went on a great rant last night on A to Z Sports Prime Time. Mm. You can go back and check that on these same channels. But all in on this because now Will Levis is cheap. He's only costing the Tennessee Titans $9 million over his four-year rookie contract, which he's already paid, uh, been paid one year of that. So you go all in on Will Levis right now to force him to make the decision easy for you. You give him... Calvin Ridley and DeAndre Hopkins. You give him running back duo like Tony Pollard and Tajay Spears that are able to help out a young quarterback. And I, I'm curious to see what they're going to continue to do. But going after the number one wide receiver available in free agency and landing him over the Jags who wanted to keep him and over the New England Patriots who wanted to outbid the Jags. How about this for a side nugget? Rand Carthon has now gotten DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley away from the New England Patriots, one of the biggest brands in the NFL. Now, I know that brand is a little bit dusty right now, but still, that's two off seasons in a row. Rand Carthon has gotten DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley when the Patriots wanted both of those players. They chose Tennessee. Now, I think it's all in on Will Levis because you're gonna like he's cheap now. Spend the money now to find out so you can make sure that you know what you're doing when you're going to have to offer up Will Levis maybe $50 million a year in three years or two years from now, honestly. So I think it's, it is risky. I didn't expect it. So stunned is another word. I think Ian Rappaport nailed it, the stunner. And so, but I'm going to say all in. They're going all in on Will Levis right now. It, it, and it stacks up with everything else this offseason. Firing Vrabel. Hiring Callahan and bringing in the other pieces around Brian Callahan, and then setting up the roster to be Will Levis's opportunity. 
Yeah, I, I don't know if all in is the word that I would use because I feel like going all in on your quarterback is when you give your quarterback that contract where you're saying, okay, you're the guy, take us to the promised land. But I do no, understand. They're going all in to find out. Like, like they're yeah, getting, are, like they're giving him. It's like it's what the Dolphins kind of did with Tua. It's the Dolphins gave Tua Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, and then they went and got Raheem Mostert. They went and they kept Mike Gesicki for a while. They did all these things to where Tua, if you suck, it's your fault because we did everything here right. We got Mike McDaniel doing all this and that, but if if, if Tua sucks, it's Tua's fault, not anybody else's. It's the same. No, yeah. It, it's a good thing you can do, right? And uh, I, I do think NFL teams are guilty of this too frequently where they don't do enough early enough to find out about the quarterback or figure out what a quarterback is. Now, I, I also believe the National Football League has a tendency to discard quarterbacks too early, uh, quarterbacks that you can win with, quarterbacks that are are capable of being franchise quarterbacks. But there is a standard uh, whether fair or not that like you have to be on a certain next level. Otherwise it's a reshuffling of the deck looking for that new guy. But where people are, are guilty all the time to me is waiting two, three years to make this sort of a push to surround somebody with the right head coach, the right play caller, the right talent around them. And even if a quarterback falls a little bit short of the standards you might have for him, you can make a lot of excuses for him. You can say, okay, well, the offensive line's not good. Okay, well, they don't have any weapons. Okay, well, the play calling sucks. Uh, and, and I think the Titans and every other team around the league would consistently be better off if they did a move like this. We got a rookie season of Will Levis in which he flashed a lot and showed a ton of promise. Is he the quarterback of the future? TBD. I believe so. Others, somebody else would disagree with that or not be as sold on that. And we're going to find out this year. If Will Levis doesn't succeed, it's not going to be because of Brian Callahan. Yeah. It's not going to be because he doesn't have the weapons. Hopefully, over the course of this offseason, they continue to improve that offensive line. And it's not going to be because of the protection. It's going to be on his shoulders. And so we're going to know, like you said, Austin, is he the guy and what is he capable of? If he's not, that now you still have a talented roster to go and give the next dude. But if he is, you found out very quickly and now you're able to just keep building and keep building. So yeah, I, I so, think you're you're correct there. Yeah, all in is my one word with a hyphen. I, I did not use the comma my ass like Skip Bayless did earlier uh, this week. But Scott Weaver says the Patriots set Mac Jones up to fail with no one around him. Sure. Right? I, Mac Jones... Well, is now traded to the Jags because yeah. he was throwing to Kendrick Bourne and, and some other, you know, like you get Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith up there he, to go along with some kind of weak receivers. Well, I think Mac Jones proved that he wasn't good this past year. Yes. But they didn't know that until this past year because they hadn't given him every, like Daniel Jones is an example of this to me. Justin Fields is kind of an example of this to me. The, the, like these quarterbacks that you see teams kind of going, well, we could, we could upgrade maybe, or we could like, you know, those are the quarterbacks that I think are in bad situations because they went two years with Wandale Robinson as their number one wide receiver <laughs> in New York. And you kind of no offensive line, right? There's some stuff we like here, but can he put it all together? You see a, a flash of it one season, you give him the big contract. Now it kind of comes back the other way, and you don't know if he's the guy. And that's a bad right. spot to be as a team. And, and I, I say this at times whenever we're doing, you know, we have a lot of experiments, right, Sam, in our business where it's like, oh, let's experiment with this headline. Let's experiment with this social graphic or this strategy. There is no failed experiment if you find out the answer. The answer sure. could be what you want. It could be a positive or a negative, but you know the experiment was a success because you found an answer. Mac Jones was a failed experiment that waited too long before you knew the answer. And now they're in a different spot. Like, I don't even know if Justin Fields has an answer, if he's a failed or successful uh, quarterback or not. It's kind of a failed experiment because you don't have anything tangible to hold on to. The yeah. Titans are giving themselves a successful experiment because you're going to know if Will Levis has it or doesn't. And that is what they had to do. So that's why I say all in. Totally. Um, 
I, I'm kind of in the same vein here. I, I got I kept going back and forth on two words, but I'm going to okay. focus on Calvin Ridley because I think you did a good job there of encapsulating one word to describe the signing. One word to describe the player for me uh, that I that sticks out is just compliment. I love how Calvin Ridley is going to complement this offense and fit into this offense. Uh, I, I think he is the type of wideout that Will Levis needs, that Brian Callahan needs, and that DeAndre Hopkins can really benefit from. Both DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley Austin were in the top 12 NFL wide receivers in yards before the catch last year. Over 80% of Calvin Ridley's receiving yards, over 800 yards out of his 1,000, came before the catch. He was not your throw me a screen pass, throw me a five-yard slant, and I'm just going to go and house it and uh, you know trust blocking down the field type of wide receiver. He can make plays on the football. He can get open deep. If you want to roll the tape of what he did to the Titans uh, when he played them twice last mm -hmm. year, we can see some examples of this about how he wins deep. J just, just absolutely right by takes the top off of a defense 50 yards down the field before he catches it gets wide open he can line up anywhere in the formation he creates separation and for a quarterback in will levis who we know loves to air it out loves to say f it d hop down there somewhere he now has a second guy who he can say f it Ridley down there somewhere. I'm going to throw it up and trust my guy to make a play. They've got two guys who can do that now. They didn't really have that guy to compliment DeAndre Hopkins last year. Traylon Burks, this is what he's supposed to be, right? Is that guy who this can is, make a play. He's a twitchy, he's a twitchy Traylon Burks who catches the damn ball. <laughs> like, but Traylon Burks was like, I think the idea of him in a perfect world is the guy who makes the, that big 60-yard catch who wins the jump ball, who can take the top off of a defense, who can set up DeAndre Hopkins for some of his intermediate routes. That's kind of what Traylon Burks was supposed to be. He kind of proved that he didn't have the play strength to be that guy right now last year and is too unreliable in that position. But between Calvin Ridley and DeAndre Hopkins, between Tajay Spears and Tony Pollard as some, some safe little checkdowns, I keep referring back to the Miami Dolphins comeback in which Will Levis literally just rode his Tajay Spears check down for 85 receiving yards uh, as, as a way of storming a comeback and winning a football game. He now has two running backs that can do that and two wide receivers that can get open 30, 40 yards down the field and make a tough catch. So the compliment that he is for Will Levis, for DeAndre Hopkins, and for Brian Callahan with the ability to line up anywhere makes this a really good fit. Yeah, I agree. I was watching that clip. I'm going to play it again because as I was watching it, I was seeing um I was seeing Brian Callahan's words come to life with Calvin Ridley's plays. And so I'm going to go deeper into that, but first Sam tell everybody about the Bone and Joint Institute. The Bone and Joint Institute, they're the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care because whenever you get hurt in life, you have to know who to trust? You don't want to fumble on your recovery. We can't afford to do that. So uh, go see our friends at the Bone and Joint Institute. They're located out in Franklin with a state-of-the-art rehab facility to assist you in your recovery. Everything is all under one roof, so you don't have to drive everywhere in Middle Tennessee to get to different appointments. It's all there. Rehab, clinic, imaging, surgery, testing. It's all at the Bone and Joint Institute. Like I said, in Franklin, right off the highway, easy access to get in and out. Uh, it could not be better, and there could not be uh, better people, better doctors over there. So uh, make sure you go to boneandjointtn.org to schedule an appointment. That's boneandjointtn.org. And with BetMGM, we've already talked about it. It's March. You got a lot of hoops to watch over the next few weeks, and you can do that and win big with our bonus code on BetMGM, ATOZ Sports. That's ATOZ Sports. When you sign up with the BetMGM app, you get up to $1,500 back in bonus bets on your first bet. So if it misses, no problem because you get it all back in bonus bets. So go big with that first bet this March with BetMGM when you sign up with our bonus code ATOZ Sports. That's ATOZ Sports. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. 21 or older, new, uh, new customer offer. Uh, Tennessee only. 
All promotions, subject to qualification, other requirements. First online room money wager only. Rewards issued not available bonus bets. Bonus bets expires in seven days. And for problem games, work called Tennessee Redline 800 889 9789. So, Sam, uh, I mentioned I was watching Calvin Ridley's plays and hearing Brian Callahan's words come to life. And one of them was win on the outside, win fast on the outside. You win fast. You throw fast and look how fast he wins. He wins immediately. He's got the speed to where you can't cover him up tight because he can blow right by you in the game. The Titans won against the Jags. He dropped a, another touchdown pass. He caught three touchdown passes and was over a hundred yards twice uh, in the, against the Titans. He wins fast in the red zone, easy throw touchdown from the slot. He wins fast and he's explosive around the edge here. And so when I'm watching Calvin Ridley and I, I kind of see what the Titans want to do and I kind of see what they're going to get and how they can invest in a wide receiver like this to be able to help Will Levis get rid of the ball fast so we, you don't have to go invest a bunch of money in the offensive line. And so I think you win fast, you throw fast. That's what stood out to me when I was watching those highlights from Calvin Ridley. There were just the, the two games this past season against the Titans where he went over 100 yards in each game, scored three total touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, it, it checks out, right? Like, this is the fit, right? And that's why I like that word, compliment. It's why I like how this offense is starting to come together and and – like I said, I mean, between DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley, you like what you have. You certainly don't have to be done. There could still be a guy coming in the draft. There could still be, um, you know, uh, I'm sure there will be at least a wide receiver in the draft at some point, or maybe a tight end at some point in the draft. Uh, and you see how that kind of changes your offense. What At what stage in the draft? I don't know. But um, the, the Titans are going to continue building this thing. And you're starting to see it get built in Brian Callahan's image, which I think should be really exciting for Titans fans. Yeah. Now, Jackson has a super chat. It says, Ridley signing is worthless if you don't have an offensive line. Uh, easy. Tovey brought up. I'm surprised they're not addressing the O-line. Well, they did because they, they Lloyd, gave Lloyd, Lloyd Christianberry the most guaranteed money in it from a center in NFL history. But Jackson, you know, that's kind of what I'm saying when I bring up Brian Callahan's words, win fast, throw fast. You know, because if you throw fast, the offensive line doesn't have to hold up for as long. And so you can get lesser players and invest in touchdown scores. And so all the, the rhetoric that Brian Callahan has been talking about this offseason is about valuing people who score touchdowns. And Calvin Ridley can do that in this offense with DeAndre Hopkins, with Tony Pollard, Tajay Spears, and maybe some others. So, you know, they need to improve the offensive line. I think they've already done that. Lloyd Cushenberry couldn't be more of an improvement from an, from the center position. And I, I think – go ahead. Listen, they got two picks, number seven and number 38, and one of them is going to be a tackle. I, I have a ton of confidence in that. Um, maybe both of them are going to be a tackle. We don't know. But I, I think they're going to come away with a right tackle or left tackle in the NFL draft. You have Peter Skaronsky from last year. You just paid Lloyd Cushenberry. Like, th there is the I, makings I of a Sadiq, very good offensive line here. I think Sadiq Charles versus Daniel Brunskill versus Dylan Radins at right guard is a good battle. Yeah, I think there's a, and I think Sadiq Charles is an upgrade. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure if he wins that job or not. I think Daniel Brunskill probably would be my favorite going into training camp to win the right guard job, but I think. Like you said, it can't hurt to have the depth. It can't hurt to have the versatility that Sadiq Charles has. It can't hurt to have competition. And so Sadiq Charles, Daniel Brunskill, Dylan Radins, Nicholas petit Ferrer, and Jalen Duncan as like depth offensive linemen, when you can potentially still add a left tackle or a right tackle and you have moves to be made is a, is a good thing for that group as a whole. But you have a, a core on the interior left side of your offensive line now that you can build this thing around. So they have a lot of time to fit, finish it, um, but cannot understate the value of Lloyd Cushenberry to an offense. That center role is huge. Yeah, absolutely huge. Uh, another super chat. This one caught my attention. We'll go through all the super chats uh, as we kind of get through where they fit 
uh, in the show, but Ryan said, this is blasphemy. You just chose NWI and Ridley over trying to trade for T Higgins and signing Tyler Boyd combo. Uh, Sam, your face kind of says exactly how I was feeling about it. One trading for T Higgins means you lose some very valuable draft capital. Uh, and so you're able to sign Calvin Ridley, who is a better player. I think T Higgins, I think T Higgins is a redundancy of Deandre Hopkins. Calvin Ridley is not. Tyler yeah, Boyd, I, I know you had conversation at the combine about Tyler Boyd, and I don't think Tyler Boyd is here. Tyler Boyd is not a Tennessee Titan for a reason. If there's one guy that is a head coach outside of Cincinnati who would know how valuable Tyler Boyd is, it's Brian Callahan, and he's not here. I think that tells you what you need to know about Tyler Boyd right now. Yeah, Tyler Boyd probably has one year left of production. Uh, he's can be decent against zone coverages. I was told by people at the combine that that man is not winning against man coverage anymore. He's not getting open. He He's not doing what Calvin Ridley does. Um, outside of the draft capital alone, I would take the Ridley NWI combination over Higgins and Boyd. Um, and then you'd factor in trading the draft capital and you know, more expensive T and Boyd combined more expensive than Ridley and NWI combined. Uh, I think that's a tough take there, Ryan. Yeah. Uh, Ryan says that Boyd's better than Burks. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> wide receiver four, like by, you know the end of the, by the start of the season, I think Burks is the wide receiver four. So NWI might be better than trailing Burks or, or more reliable. You can rely on NWI more than trailing Burks. So I'd do, rather do that than have Boyd. At least, you know, NWI is going to give some other value yeah, Bur- on special teams. Burks is a wide receiver four that has lottery ticket upside that like, you know, you've seen the upside flash this much, right? Maybe, yeah. maybe he gives you more than you're expecting because he puts it together and stays healthier and knows how to train this off season training with DeAndre Hopkins, by the way, uh, and has a good off season and can just come back and be a pleasant surprise. I don't think you go into the season banking on anything from Traylon Burks. You kind of uh, have to fill out an offense that puts Traylon Burks into a very specified role uh, and probably limits his snap counts on offense next year. And then you just see what you can get out of him. But yeah, I don't think yeah. Traylon Burks is being relied on by this Titans offense to be anything more than the fourth option. Yep. Yep. I uh, I want to get to our, our next question because Sam, I know you feel pretty strongly about it. Uh, and it's really centered around, did the Titans overpay for Calvin Ridley or was it, in Ridley's word, the right amount? Because Calvin Ridley tweeted uh, out yesterday and said, nah, it's the right amount when Marcus Mosier uh, tweeted that it was an overpay from Calvin Ridley. So did the Titans overpay uh, Calvin Ridley or was it the right amount? Did they overpay or the right amount? We'll get to more Super Chats to center around this conversation, but first, Farm Bureau Health Plans, don't overpay for your health coverage. You can underpay for your health coverage, which is exactly what you want to do with Farm Bureau Health Plans. They've been serving Tennesseans for over 75 years. And whenever you're in a situation where you need to check around, go check the market for better health coverage, Farm Bureau Health Um, slash ATOZ. They will do it for everybody, regardless of your situation. Maybe you've got a young family, a growing family. Uh, maybe your uh, family has empty nested you and your spouse and you need that next extra level. Or maybe you're out there on your own, independent contractor. You need to find out how to enter adulthood with health coverage. Farm Bureau Health Plans is putting extra resources into you as well. So they've been doing it for 75 years, investing in their community. And check them out and get a quote online at fbhp.com slash ATOZ. Today's show powered by BetMGM. BetMGM, uh, the king of sportsbooks, use the bonus code ATOZ Sports when you sign up and get up to $1,500 back into your account in the form of a bonus bet for a second chance to win big. And that's super valuable in March. Uh, I'm going to have a couple of picks that I'm riding with uh, next week when the tournament rolls around. And we might talk about a couple of them on the show here. But there's going to be a couple I'm passionate about, and they may or may not hit because it's March and anything can happen. But if I have BetMGM, 
uh, I've been using BetMGM forever, so I can't get this benefit. But if you don't have BetMGM, you can because you sign up, use the bonus code ATOZ Sports, and up to $1,500 can get back into your account in the form of a bonus bet if your first bet doesn't win. So if you've got that pick, I'd be like, shoot, I'm about to use the bonus code ATOZ Sports. I'm going to make my bet. And even if I lose, we're good. We got a second shot at this thing. Uh, get with the king of sports books for March. It's tournament time, baby. Uh, and it is time to get with the king of sports books at betmgm.com. All right. So, Zach, uh, I almost called you Zach. Sorry about that, Sam. <laughs> you did call me, but I, yeah, uh, I, I caught right. it. It's okay. It did, that's forty and slip, right? I think that's what that means. So we asked the chat, uh, overpay or the right amount for Calvin Ridley? I'll have you get to the uh, comments here in a second uh, on the show. But I did want to get to some super chats that are along this line. Fire in the Sky said earlier, AJ was a different general manager. People need to stop the comparisons. After free agency, Calvin is going to be around the 17th highest paid wide receiver. Contract is not too bad. I don't know if he's going to be the 17th highest paid receiver this year after free agency. He was the number one guy after free agency. And right now he's like ninth or 10th, depending if you're looking at guaranteed money, he's 10th average annual value. He's ninth, but give it a year, right? Next year, he's going to be probably around 17th. And then that'll continue to get lower and lower and lower uh, throughout the four years overall. Um, Nathaniel yep. says, uh, you got some comments on fire in the skies. No, I, I totally agree. You're, you got it. Uh, Nathaniel says, think about it. Who do the Titans have to resign next year? Still going to sign more premium players. Rand is going to continue to cook. That's a good point too, because when you miss on first round draft picks and you miss on the draft picks in general, you're not having to extend your own guys. So you get to, you'd rather extend your own guys and draft well, right? Because that means you're winning on rookie contracts and on second contracts. But the benefit of drafting sucky like they have is you're not going to have to pay a bunch of money to guys uh, that you don't, that you already have, right? Well, I think it, like just in general, it, it's weird, right? Because I believe Nathaniel's comment here is in response to people saying, well, we're not ready to go all in and now you're making an all in type of move. But since when was it a bad thing to just get good players and get better? Start turning this thing around. Because uh, like we mentioned, Austin, you DeAndre Hopkins might be gone next offseason. I don't know how that situation is going to play out over the next year or whatever it is. So I, I, I don't know how that thing goes. But if Will Levis is good, if you feel like, okay, this is the answer at quarterback, and your team takes a step forward as a collective – in 2024, you have now positioned yourself going into 2025 where you don't have to say we need at least two wide receivers because we don't have DeAndre Hopkins and we don't have anybody else. You've now positioned yourself to be improved, find out about your quarterback, and then make it a lot easier when you do make that all-in push. The Texans did a lot last offseason. They improved a lot because of it. And now the Texans were in a position where they could say, we just made the playoffs. We just took a huge step forward with a rookie contract at quarterback. And, uh, you know, we like and checked a lot of these boxes. Well, now we can fill these needs. It's never a bad thing to just get better and just improve your football team and limit the amount of holes that you have to fill. The problem that a lot of franchises do in sports in general is needing to patch some holes and doing it with patchwork one-year deals. We saw it with the Titans last year. I liked Aziz Alshire. I thought he was a really good player for them. I liked Sean Murphy Bunting as a solid player for them and a really good guy in that locker room. They added to their roster on some one-year prove-it type of deals that filled huge needs for them. You got to this offseason and you've got the same holes because those guys left in free agency. Mm -hmm. So getting Calvin Ridley is the fit for your team, but it's not going to be a, a, a hole that pops up again next offseason because you've got this guy now. Uh, it, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, no doubt about that. Um, King VC with Super Chat says, if anyone says overpaid, I don't want to hear anything else about not spending money. No, it's the true. right amount because he's here. So Sam... Uh, I'll let you go to the overall chat because we asked overpaid or the right amount. Calvin Ridley says it's the right amount. He agreed to it. So obviously he thinks it's the right amount. What's the uh, 
chat saying overall. I might put up a YouTube poll to figure out what the to get a percentage on the people that think it's an overpay or not. Well, Tony says they overpaid. Jason says it's the right amount. Uh, Brandon says it's due in this market for the best available wide receiver in free agency. 9% of the cap is fine. So Lucas thinks it was the right amount. Uh, Shady says, nah, the right amount. Quoting uh, our guy, Calvin Ridley mm -hmm. there. Willie says the right amount. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, overpay, but who cares? Uh, we paid the suck tax, says Curtis, which That's does Buck's exist. That's new term, the suck yep. tax. We suck tax. Uh, let's see, the right amount, says Billy. <laughs> uh, the necessary amount, says Michael. Uh, we've got 80% right, 20% overpay, which I think is an odd way of phrasing that with percentages. Um, Dre says they overpaid. Zedro says overpaid but needed to. Uh, it was a sticker shock at first, but Titans Kyle thinks it's the right amount, which is fair, right? 90-something million dollars kind of makes you go, whoa. Um, Devin says it was just value. It was the right amount, perfect amount in the right of uh, modern cap era. Right from Demario, right from Deborah. Overpay says Brandon, but it's free agency. Everyone is overpaid, so that makes it just right. Uh, and then Titan says the right amount. So it feels like people in general are in on this being the right amount. And Austin, I have something to say about this. Mm -hmm. This is uh, something I hate maybe more than anything else about NFL free agency. This is not an overpay for Calvin Ridley. And you know why it's not an overpay? Because if there is a league-wide understanding that you have to overpay to land such and such player in free agency, top, top wide receiver in free agency, you've got to overpay to get him. You, that's not an overpay. That's market value. That's the value that the market has placed on that player where top wide receivers in free agency go for $20-something million a year. That's what it costs. You either want one or you don't. The Titans mm -hmm. wanted one. They paid for him. They got him. If they didn't give it to him, somebody else probably was going to. So it's the weirdest thing. I don't think people who have this, that's an overpay, have any understanding of how a free market works, or at least they're not caring enough to think about it for a second. If everybody goes, yes, the price for Calvin Ridley is $23 million dollars in AAV. Maybe you look in the mirror and say, we can't afford $23 million for that production, but it's not an overpay if that's the value that everybody else has on that guy. I don't, I like my brain cannot conceptualize how people put that together and say, everybody says he's worth this, but if you pay him that, then you're, you're, it's an overpay. It's ridiculous. That's not how market works. It's what it costs. I can't go. Yeah. Listen, I hate that I went to the grocery store and milk was $4, but you know what? I needed some damn milk to make my omelets in the morning. So I bought milk. I didn't overpay for milk. I paid what the world tells me I have to pay for milk because that's what milk costs. And if I don't want milk, I'm not forced to pay $4 for milk, but I'm not going to eat any omelets either. So I mean, you're, all, you're also... You're also not forced to use milk to make your omelets. You don't have to have it. True. But that's but your it's choice. not going to be as good of an omelet. That that texture is not going to be as good. We know this. Milk and omelets is better. Fact. Uh, the or a little sugar. Put a little sugar in your scrambled eggs and make it that extra Michael Scott. Uh, milk flavor. does go in omelets. Anytime you make scrambled eggs, you put a little milk in there. So I don't. You know, chill. No, it don't matter. Don't. You get what I'm trying to say. If you want the product, you pay the sticker price. The sticker yeah. price for an elite wide receiver is this. The Titans wanted it. They got it. Quit moping. Quit moaning. Quit complaining. Be happy that your favorite football team is getting good players. End of story. Milk in eggs is a fact. I'm getting proved right by Rashid and John. Just saying. No, it's not. It's not a must. It's an option. Like No, you don't have to use milk. I just use, I've been eating three eggs, three scrambled eggs and salsa every day for lunch for like three years. Yeah. yeah I don't need I any milk. I don't need any milk. I'm good with that. You don't have to, you don't have to, you can save four bucks, Sam. You don't have to do that. Uh, but all right, more super chats to come in here. Kane is uh, on one of his 
Kane thing saying that Sam's rambling and then Kane pays five bucks for this comment. Okay. We get the signings. We want to know more about how much cap is remaining and what is the next move? When are the visits this week? All right. All right. So Kane, we, the only contract we know of first year cap is Tony Pollard. That's the only contract details that have been released. He's a $4 million cap at in 2024. Sam and I were kind of doing some math this morning. We think the Titans still probably have around 40 to $45 million of cap space or more to spend right now, uh, depending on what their rookie salary pool is. And then as far as visits, um, they've got a visit today with Jerome Baker. They're talking to Chase Young this week, and they're going to have another visit with Marcus May, a safety who was drafted by the Jets when Denard Wilson was there. That's going to happen on Monday. So I hope Kane is satisfied after uh, an hour of really good talk about Calvin Ridley. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to know what the cap is when, until you know the full contract details, which usually don't come out until a couple weeks after the fact. You know, we got the figures, but as you mentioned, $23 million is the AAV for Calvin Ridley. It's not going to be his cap hit in 2024. Uh, it will probably be less than that because some of that's in the signing bonus that goes into the 23 AAV, which is spread out over a bunch of years. And you probably backload it to account for inflation in the cap. These are things that happen, right? So we cannot pinpoint a, a hard number of, oop, the Titans are out of cap space until we actually understand what the contracts look like fully fleshed out. So we will get to that later down, down the road when we figure out what needs are still available. If you want to know what's next, Austin just gave you a list of some of the moves that could be coming because of some of the guys that they're visiting. I think the Titans need a safety. I still think they need an inside linebacker. Um, I still think they could use some defensive line help. I still think they could get a cornerback. I think you probably look to the defense now and say, the defense, as excited as I am to watch this offense, this defense currently looks kind of ugly still, like very ugly still. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any depth in this defense and there's a lot of holes. Uh, and so I think they need to add to that side of the ball with the remaining money that they have. Linebacker, safety, corner, give me another perimeter corner. Give me another defensive lineman to replace the Nico Autry. Then we'll talk uh, about where they're at with cap space remaining. All right, we're going to skip the magic bucket today for two reasons. One, I left it in the closet across the room and I can't go get it. And two, we have too many super chats to get to. So we're going to get to some more super chats, chats to continue this Titans talk. But first, Wilson County Hyundai, make them a part of your new car buying process. Go see them in Lebanon or check them out online at wilsoncountyhyundai.com. Again, save money on that ride by not getting that downtown price. Don't overpay for your vehicle. Uh, save some money by going and seeing our guy Payne Bone and his team in Lebanon or online at wilsoncountyhyundai.com. All right, some more Super Chats because we got a lot of them left. Uh, Big Ten Jeff hopped over on YouTube to, for this Super Chat. Sam, the Titans overpaid for Ridley. If other teams are offering 18 and the Titans offered 23, that's overpaying in the market. It was reported the Titans was significantly higher than the Jags. I, I, look, I saw the Patriots were around 22. I thought the Jags were around 21 is what I saw, right? The Titans come in at 23 because you win the auction. You have to say, if somebody says $500, and you have to say 501, right? You got to, <laughs> and the thing about the Titans and the Jags is they're playing a little bit of the same game because they don't have state income, income tax. The Patriots do. And so uh, I think, you know, overpay, whatever. It was necessary to sign the guy. But, uh, if you, you know, yeah. Go ahead. Well, no, sure, right? Like, yeah, you went above where everybody else was going, but there are two things. One, that suck tax is real. Um, you know, you're not the Kansas City Chiefs who can come in and see like, hey, 18 million. I know you got 23 out there, but we're the Chiefs, 18 million. Calvin really might take 18 million from the Chiefs. He might take that bargain to go and play with Patrick Mahomes and win a Super Bowl. That wouldn't shock me at all. You don't have that luxury. You have to, as a bad mid-market or small market team in sports have to pay top dollar to get people unless they have an emotional connection to your franchise, a hometown discount, or literally a hometown like somebody who's from Tennessee and wants to come on home and play around family. You are going to have to outbid other NFL franchises all the time. And like Austin said, just because you're the top offer doesn't mean that you're above the market. It just means you won the auction. Yes. Um, all right. So uh, Maven asks, is this the most money 
the Titans have ever spent in the offseason. I mean, no, yeah, because it's the high may, like sure is it well, yeah, I guess because of the cap is up there, but like I mean they you know they how, make I, deals I, similar to this before. I did some more math. I think the Titans thus far in total contracts, not like for one year spending, but total contracts, the Titans have already spent roughly two hundred and thirty million dollars. Yeah, total contracts though, like a little bit different. But still, I, I think that's, that's one what we can go off the most right? significant total. But we don't have that because, money available right now. But when right, you, but two hundred thirty million, how much of that's actually getting paid out? One twenty. Like I, I mean, you can you're probably cutting know. guys and not fulfilling all of those deals all the way through. So, like I, you have to look at what is like the guaranteed money probably. And figure out how much they've spent in that. that yeah, the guaranteed money because Amy Adams Strunk has to put that in the escrow account uh, for the guaranteed money. So there's 50. Uh, we don't have all of it. You know, 26 for Cushionberry, 50 for uh, Ridley alone is a lot of guaranteed money from just those two signed guys. But but uh, yes, it's, they've spent a lot of money and they should because they have to improve their football team. And they're not spending money on their quarterback for the next two and a half years. Yeah, that's how you do it. Andre says strategy might have changed now, but I still want neighbors or dunes at seven. That wide receiver room would be insane and have a guy in the wings to take over the number one spot. Uh, and then again, uh, Calvin comes in a little bit similar all on the same lines. I have a feeling with no news on Tyron Smith means he's coming here. Then go a dunes at seven, sign me up. It's early, but these moves are outstanding. Uh, and then I did see uh, another, somebody says, Jeffrey says, extend Deandre Hopkins with an additional two years with a third year option to keep him. And really together to move Burks to the slot, attempt to trade for Higgins. That's a you're not gonna you're not gonna do all that and then attempt to trade for T Higgins. Yeah. If you do all that, then you take two offensive linemen in the first two rounds. Yeah, that was a lot. That's a lot. Uh, I'm not fully out. I, I said it earlier. You call me crazy. I'm not fully out on the idea of taking a receiver either. I think I don't think the Titans uh, are either. I, I talked. I really to don't. And I mean, like, let's look. Let me let's do that. Right. Let's look at the. Cincinnati Bengals. We keep using them as an example. Tyler Boyd went from being the Bengals one to being the Bengals three like that because they said T Higgins, Jamar Chase, let's add T Higgins. Let's add Jamar Chase. Let's do both of them. Uh, just because they had two good wide receivers didn't mean they were afraid to add a third. They continued to do that. And it turned into having three explosive weapons that helped Joe Burrow a lot. Um, and even when at times people said, you don't really need a wide receiver right now. You need to add that offensive lineman. They did it anyway. It can still work out, uh, especially with one of them on an expiring contract like DeAndre Hopkins. I do think having a Malik neighbors, whoever it is, right, waiting in the wings to be that next go-to option with Calvin Ridley could be very, very valuable, and it would be a lot of fun to watch this season. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, Brandon uh, Super Chat says, Sam is A to Z Sports wide receiver one. Pay him, Austin. <laughs> uh, 92 we'll, million. There we go. Yeah, is that what you want? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you, we'll talk later about that. Uh, but I did see, uh, Sam, uh, jokes aside, you did favor a comment from Patrick saying, Sam, who are you saying is wide receiver three? Did you answer yeah. that already? Did I miss it? I didn't, but uh, like my answer to Patrick would just be, I think one of them is still coming in the draft. Like it, I, I cannot listen to what Brian Callahan said at the NFL combine about, well, hopefully we can get a couple of guys in this draft class that can come in and make plays and think the Titans aren't going to have a wide receiver out of this draft class that has a role in their offense. So somebody like Kyle Phillips, probably on the hot seat of like a cut candidate, uh, maybe mm -hmm. like really needs to find a way to have value to make this team. NWI, I think you can say there's your wide receiver five, uh, maybe NWI is not back with this team if Colton Dowell doesn't have a knee injury last year and probably yeah. missed a good chunk of this season. But Colton Dowell out of the picture. Uh, so, yeah, NWI, your wide receiver five, can go in there in certain formations, can play special teams. We know he has special teams value. If Traylon Burks is your four and plays in particular packages, like when you're running verts and trips and certain things like that, that's fine. But find a more versatile wide receiver three, Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins, even if it's in round two or round three or four, or wherever you end up getting, I don't know if you can get into round three to draft someone, 
But let's say they draft Lad McConkey in the second round. I know that's a name that you like to bring up as a as an option at 38 for them. Yeah, did right? you see Lad McConkey's three cone drill or his shuttle drill at Georgia Pro Day yesterday? Three nine eight or something stupid. Yeah, so let's say Lad McConkey is there. Or any one of those guys that kind of drops a little bit into the second round, I, I think you could go Hopkins, Ridley, McConkey in the slot. Burks is your wide receiver four. Uh, and you can fill out an entire receiving core that way. But I I think there's another addition coming that is going to have some sort of like substantial role in the offense. Yeah. Uh, Eric just throws a super chat in here. He says uh, they need to draft Leggett, uh, Xavier Leggett from South Carolina. He goes, that boy <laughs> is country strong. Have you heard uh, him talk? I have not heard him talk. You I have heard, saw the comment. I heard him talk and senior it bowl. is shocking. Huh? You saw him at the senior bowl, right? Uh, yeah, I saw him at both, uh, both. Uh, senior bowl. I don't know if he was at the combine. I don't remember, but I did see him at the senior bowl and it, his voice is shocking. It is. Yeah. Country strong is a word for it. Like deep, the thickest accent I've ever really heard on a professional football player, like legitimately the slowest drawl ever, uh, in Xavier Leggett's voice. So it's funny. Ryan says, stop cherry picking, Sam. Tyler Boyd has multiple 1K uh, seasons. Like five years ago. Yeah, I, I mean, he does. Ryan, I, I, I'm not going to tell you like, who I've been talking to, but I've been okay, talking okay. to some people. That 2019, know- Ryan. Like, 2019, is COVID wasn't a thing. Nobody had heard of coronavirus. And at the time, it was COVID-19. Like, that's and you the want to last talk about a guy had a thousand yards. You want to talk about miles on the tires and stuff and tread on the tires. Tyler Boyd's been a guy that's been doing it for a long time and playing a lot of football. He is starting to go this way. Like it or not, it's true. He's starting to go downhill. So maybe he has a year of production left in him. Maybe they do sign Tyler Boyd and he's in your slot and he is that wide receiver three, right? That's fine. Maybe, maybe that's still in the cards for them. I don't know. But I'm not banking on a trade for T. Higgins where I have to give up probably my second round pick and Tyler Boyd over just paying Calvin Ridley. It's still a bad take. Sorry about you. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what what Ryan's got about Tyler Boyd, but he just really wants Tyler Boyd, who's had 800 yards, 700 yards, and 600 (laughs) yards. He's decreasing his yards in the last 800 800, 700, 600 in the last four years because the Bengals have better players and he's getting older and he's played a lot of snaps and a lot of that's football. Ne- that's been, nothing been a very good Tyler player. Boyd. That has yes. had a great career. Had a great career. If he comes, he's going to go somewhere and have an impact in 2024. But if Tyler he's Robert Boyd's Woods, looking, he's Robert Woods. Sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, but if Tyler Boyd's looking for a two or three year deal and you're going to have to pay him, like, that's not where you need to tie up your resources. And it certainly should not be the option that you bank on for this offense. A T Higgins trade and Tyler Boyd signing it would not do anything for me. Right. All right. Last super chat. Then we got to get out of here. Darren says, do we suck? Yeah. But the tax isn't for sucking. It's the market. It's a tax for not developing in house, which I think you can uh, swap out not developing in house for sucking. (laughs) I think uh, they're kind of somewhat synonymous because the Titans uh, have not won a lot of football games the last two years. Their roster was old and expensive. They are flipping a lot of it and resetting, rebuilding. So yeah, they have to pay a little bit more for the top players. But um, so Darren, you're right. They're not, they didn't develop in house. So they had to go pay somebody else. And allow that to be a potential argument for what I was talking about at number seven overall and, and a potential wide receiver at seven overall. It might seem like uh, they, they shouldn't do it. They should avoid it at all costs. You're fine at wide receiver. But again, DeAndre Hopkins, what if he's gone next year? You're going to be sitting here as the Titans saying, we need to get another wide receiver to compliment Calvin Ridley and help out Calvin Ridley. And if you want to go for another guy with as significant of an impact as Calvin Ridley, you're going to have to pay top of the market Calvin Ridley prices again. You have to develop one of them in-house if you want to have sustained success in your receiving core without having a Chargers situation where Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are accounting for $65 million of cap space combined. So 
uh, it might be something that the Titans have to consider is can we get somebody on a rookie deal and develop in-house to avoid the we suck tax in the future? All right, that'll do it for us on this Thursday. We've had a lot of great conversation about Calvin Ridley for an hour and almost 15 minutes of Calvin Ridley talking. There's still uh, more topics to branch off of. So we will have uh, continued great coverage, a to Z sports.com for a bunch of articles. Uh, you go to our Titan section and we've got all of our content there about Calvin Ridley uh, and more of this free agency week. Uh, we've also got tons of social media content out there across all of our handles. Instagram, Twitter X, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, everything. We've got it. Throw in threads there too. Sam, the Titans are having a press conference at 1130 today, which is just over yep. two hours from where we are right now. Yep. So uh, we don't know who's talking yet, but some new free agents are expected to speak. We'll find out if Calvin Ridley's uh, fast enough to get to Nashville for that. Doubt uh, I doubt it. I doubt it's Calvin Ridley. Uh, but I assume Cushenberry, Pollard, Wuze, uh, and maybe Kenneth Murray Jr., the, the crop from Monday, uh, might make it on this press conference. We'll see if some others join. But uh, you'll have live coverage of that press conference at 11.30 Central Time, and then a Titans at 2 uh, afterwards to kind of recap that presser. Buck will be live tonight with A to Z Sports Primetime. I know Buck has uh, content coming about uh, how this Calvin Ridley – uh, signing impacts the Titans draft or does it? Uh, so we'll hear from Buck later on and we'll be back tomorrow morning on a Friday. Make sure you hit that like button because that helps us out tremendously across all platforms, Facebook and YouTube. If you guys hit the like button, more people watch it. The more people that watch it, the more that we get to grow and have more fun with you guys and do more Titans coverage. So make sure you hit that like button for us and we'll catch you guys tomorrow morning on a Friday. Sam will be live later today for Titans at 2. Appreciate it as always.